I jumped in with a grin, bumped my chin, scraped my knee, earned my scars, pray for me. You're such a blessing. I'm wrestling with all trying to pin something to the pad, the mat, the fat was trimmed but grew back. I went against the grain and my instinct said, I told you not to do that. I knew that this, that boom bat. Didn't you feel your stomach churn, burn like reflux? I make mistakes and lose trust. Stagnant is my magnet when my thoughts are tragic, but when I'm clear, I steer clear the fear I hear. You hear that? Sounds like a dream come true. Refreshing like when dreams come to you and reveal themselves in a song, a poem. Strain you out like a hot comb, a perm. New lessons help us unlearn our ignorance. Each moment is significant, but we take them for granted. Not trying to rebuild the damage, bridge the gap. Tap into the source, breathe through, breeze through my course. What board is this? What's the mission? Listen, man, listen. It's us against the damn. But damn, they winning. They think they winning, you ain't winning. Trying to hypnotize us with their lies. Wake up, open your eyes, stretch your soul. Connect with the role you were put here to play. Looking at barrels and damn the spray. We bulletproof, who let the bullets loose? You can't strike us all down. We hurting, but we ain't all in the ground. Each death fertilized our spirit, our growth, our hope. Our hearts still pound like the first drum played. We birth civilization like the first love made. Oh. Feels so good, just like I knew it would. I'm back to meeting my neighbors in the hood, back to looking to the stars, looking into hearts, connecting, reflecting. We all been detecting a change, a shift, a tilt in the axis, like a close call. It's no accident. Something's happening. Feel that? Something's happening. I'm raveling. I'm babbling. Purpose. Have you found yours? Ignore yours. You get the itch to explore more, open more doors, peek in. We all seeking peace to the east, my brother to the east. I'm from an ex clan finishing these moves so I can move to the next plan. I'm plotting. Yes, I get it popping. I pop in so I like it, intertwine and dance between minds. Hands open wide. I'm catching feelings. Ooh, I got that spirit. Can't you hear it? Yeah, you hear it. They fear it when we get here, when we get up there, when we we scale the air when we breathe without stress. Yes, we forget how blessed we are. We come far, but not far enough. I look in the mirror, ask myself, what you gonna do in the clutch? I'm breaking the cuss, pushing past the cuss. Pay attention to what they doing to us. Clarity is a must. Habits come calling. In the eye of the storm, I'm holding on to everything that's calming. The fight is exhausting. Thank God I ain't lost it. Thank God I ain't lost it. I stay praying to him. Time to get back in the gym. Him back on a pen, working it out because I know it's going to all work out in the end. Why pretend like it ain't? You think things go defeat you, but they can't. You stronger than that. I'm stronger than that. I just stood on mine. Ain't no turning back. All I got is these words, these words, these conversations, letting me heard in your nerves, digging your reserves, and let's raise our vibration. Let's raise our vibration. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my esteemed pleasure to welcome you to the Recording Academy's Craft Sessions first ever poetry event entitled The Spoken Word. I'm your host for the evening, Jay Ivey, and I have to start off by saying before we introduce some of the most dynamic, incredible poets on the earth, I have to say how proud I am to be a member of the poetry community. Poetry, it changes lives. Poetry saves lives. As, as poets, we have seen those effects happen in our own lives and in others. We've seen the power of our gifts. We've seen the power of the word. We've seen how poetry can shift and change somebody's life in an instant. And it's, it is my pleasure to be here to welcome you all to this event. This is all about raising awareness in the poetry community and our relationship with the Grammys and the Recording Academy. And, and we go do that tonight. We go raise awareness and we go raise the roof at the same time because we have we have some lightning rods that's about to come and, and strike like like no other. So I'm very excited. I like again to welcome you. Thank you all for being here for supporting the movement, and we go get into it. We go get into some poetry. So I hope y'all ready. And, and, and if you haven't put on your seatbelt, you need to probably buckle that up right about right now. 
because now is the time. So we go get into it. We have our first poet coming to the stage and she hails from Nashville. She's a songstress. She has blues running through her veins, a folklorist, and she is just incredible. So I would love to welcome you all to one and only Miss Adia Victoria. I do thank you for that introduction. That was mighty generous. Uh, my name is Adia Victoria. I live in Nashville, Tennessee, but I grew up a little deeper south than that in South Carolina. And growing up, uh, they used to have Klan rallies in my town when I was in middle school. And I remember doing some research on the Confederacy. And their motto was uh, Dio Vindice, Vindicated by God. So this poem is called A Blueing Down, and this is me speaking back reclaiming my Southern memory. Giving eye to my good mind, I look out on a land bleeding her people back inside the arms of undying memories. The antebellum, famed and revered, the men in gray, dipped in bronze, placed in permanence, a standing restructuring of Southern memory. I see moonlight and magnolia, Juleps at high noon, working in concert to diminish the truth of white hoods at Pulaski, red shirts at Hamburg, the Wilmington Light Infantry beginning an exodus of black bodies. Tear back your veil and face me, girl. I see your fear in full, birthing calls for white men and shotguns, for rivers blood choked, for the wealth of the commonwealth. Winchesters and buckshot at close range. Your fair face angered in a flame. Terrible when the fight and blood is up with my good mind. I see the pace set by bloodshed or redemption. The very violence of their victory as an essential catharsis for all defeat. Jim Crow, be a bomb for these old wounds. I see the meaning of terror stretched to include honor for the old ways for their brothers and fathers fallen for the right to what? I see the scraping of chapters in American annals for retribution. They are slick to align their cause with God and country, Dio Vendice, placed at the foot of their every idol, the specter of violence cleansed in Christ's blood a decent regard for the memory of our heroic dead. With my good mind, I remember the sizzle talk that fed Emmett Till into eternity, yes. The red-faced demagogues who closed the throats of George Floyd and Michael Garner, yes. Who pushed bullets through Tamir Rice and Breonna Taylor, yes. With my good mind, I remember. And ain't the blues just a remembering of truths gone hard and set to stone inside you? So let me be like Bessie. Let me be like Ma and Miss Spivey too. Black women who walked one chain away from slavery, owning only themselves in the truth. So with my Southern memory reclaimed, in my truth belonging to me, I walk forward in these blues. I blew down white supremacy. Thank you. Wow, wow. Please give it up for Miss Adia Victoria. Thank you so much. So profound. So, so profound. And it's, it's a beautiful reminder of, of the effect of poetry. Poetry is the root and the seed of every song ever written. And Adia was such an, a beautiful example of that. And, and that was so powerful. So thank you again, Nashville, South Carolina, South Carolina in the house. Thank you so much for being a part of this evening. That was beyond special. Miss Adia Victoria. Next, coming to the stage, we have another incredible poet, this brother, he from my town, shot town all day long. He's a, he's an educator, he's an MC, he's a, he's an author, he's he's just a master of words and wordplay. And 
I want to bring them up with no further ado. Please put your hands together, make some noise for my brother, Mr. Nate Marshall. I'm going to do this poem. This is called On Caskets. It's after the poet Suji Kwok Kim. Um, yeah. Decorating the dead is among the most basic human instincts. To return the borrowed body and acknowledge earth as maker and home. Neanderthals use antlers and flowers. Egyptians had pyramids with peasants buried in the walls they built. Some niggas just get a pine box. Hopefully you get a hole or a flame. Some only get a cold cabinet in the morgue until somebody or nobody claims them as a loss. A permanent fixture on my to-do list is research life insurance plans. Pick a good one with a fair rate and enough money to buy a nice box. Everything gone. Be all right this morning. And I contemplate the implication of the statement for the night. Everything in Mississippi is too cruel to bury. I wonder what that means if every body in Chicago has red clay in its lineage. Chief Keith must know in his bones ball like it's no tomorrow from what muddy time capsuled into the south side ground. When grandma died, she left mama a notepad with instructions. The one I remember was get the casket you want, what you like. Don't be pressured. We wore blue at the service. We matched the box and its glossy painted ribbons, gold flecked and light. House slaves are responsible for preparing the dead of the master's house. They clean and clothe. They dig the hole. They don't bury any black body really though, only dispose. One of the concessions won by slave riots was the right to a funeral. White folk were confused at how the Africans sometimes wore white, smiled, shouted like joy. They seen funerals, not home goings. My mother used to say my father loved funerals. He worked graveyard shift and spent the days and weekends visiting bodies, running his finger alongside the box and signing the greeting book. The most decent thing you can do is visit the funeral of someone you didn't know for someone you do. You do. Sister's coworker, lover's friend, accountant's mother, your aunt's high school rival. Look, black churches formed burial societies after slavery. Every week you chipped off a piece of your pay to save for the shovel and the rough hands that would lower you. I know some black folks now buying their plot foot by foot, saving for a final mortgage. It is Dia de los Muertos, and I have a check folded in between the pages of a book about genocide. I will send the money next week to the other side of my family and help bury grandma's sister. I can't think of a black rapper who hasn't contemplated their own death on record ready to die, life after death, death is certain, do or die, get rich or die trying, death certificate. This is natural. All my verses mention boxes or holes. Once we lay this brother down in the ground, we got work to do. When I was a young boy at the age of five, my mama said I gonna be the greatest man alive. These children don't expect to live past 30. They come to these funerals and they represent. They put themselves in the place of the person in the casket. Cool, thank you. Wow, Mr. Nate Marshall, please give it up one more time. Award-winning author, educator, poet, MC, speaker, playwright, incredible brother. You know, Chicago, you know, now I just got to pause there for a second, you know, brother from Chicago, so we can't just breeze on past that. But much love, my brother, much, much love. Thank you, Mr. Nate Marshall. Y'all be sure to be in tune with him. And, and again, just another example of the, of the power of poetry. And, and I want to remind you all again, while we're here tonight, again, this is 
This is uh, in celebration of the relationship of the spoken word community and the Grammys. As you all know, there is a spoken word category on the, uh, during the biggest night of, of music. And, and it's important, I wanna say this right. I wanna, I wanna say that it's important that the poets, uh, it's important that we show them that we are the storytellers, the, the keepers of history, the makers of innovation, the sweet beginnings of every song written. And we show the world by doing that. We show the world by making sure that, that we're, we're present and that we're, that we're in the building. So if you have projects that you've released, make sure that you're submitting. Submissions uh, are not over. You have until August 3rd. Go to Grammy101.com. And I'm going to be reminding y'all throughout the night because of that spoken word category, we got to make sure we have spoken word artists in there represented every year. That's just how I feel. And we about to get into one of the coldest spoken word artists, one of the coldest poets, one of the coldest recording artists to ever touch down on the earth. She's, she's inspired me immensely over the years. Uh, when I, when, like, like Nate said, when I was you know, coming up, you know, there's people that you look to and whenever I would turn on that Roots album, I would wait through this, through this classic music for the poet at the end because I knew she was gonna speak so much life into me. So please give it up for Philadelphia's own and one of our favorites to ever do it. Please give it up for Miss Ursula Rucker. Jay Ivy, I thank you. Oh my goodness. Uh, what's up, everybody? Keep your heads and your hearts up, all right? Spirits up. Uh, here we go. Don't nobody care about the black and the missing. They don't care if we hear. Don't give a fuck if we not. <laughs> you ain't crazy. This is real. Wouldn't be surprised to see our necks back in noose knots. Tick, tock, boom. The clock is ever being turned back. And as Mama Sonia Sanchez says, <laughs> the subtext is always black. Don't get it twisted that the pictures never been clearer, it's a fact. Though the lies try to close them, keep your eyes open to the catch. Any evil is possible at the hands of the devil, it's incredible. The playing field is never level. Your voice better sound with some bass and some treble cause these times we living through is real special. When we disappear, so does their fear. That's why they'd rather see us gone. But if we all left suddenly and took all our shit with us, there'd be no spirit, no song. Am I wrong? So gather in spaces together, it's essential. We must heal, strengthen and uphold each other. This is vital for our mental. Cause the dangers fashioned against us be plentiful. And remember, don't nobody care about the black and the missing. They don't care if we hear, don't give a fuck if we not. You ain't crazy, this is real. Wouldn't be surprised to see our necks back in noose knots. Don't nobody care about the black and the missing. They don't care if we hear, don't give a fuck if we not. You ain't crazy. This is real. Wouldn't be surprised to see our necks back in noose knots. Don't nobody care about the black and the missing. They don't care if we hear. Don't give a fuck if we not. You ain't crazy. This is real. Wouldn't be surprised to see our necks back in noose knots. Peace, my love. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Ursula, 
I love you. I love you so amazing. You so made me inspire me for years and years and years. And once again, you've done it again. Thank you so much. Philly Zone, Miss, Miss Ursula Rucker. Incredible, incredible. Coming up to the stage now, we have another phenomenal, phenomenal poet. Uh, I told y'all, it's not going to stop. It's going to be back to back to back to back of just nonstop incredible poetry and poets. And we have now with us, based from Atlanta, he's an educator. He's a three-time award-winning author of three poetry collections. Please put your hands together for Mr. Jericho Brown. I wrote this poem after finding out about the long list of people who have supposedly committed suicide while in police custody. Uh, that list includes people like Jesus Huerta, and Victor White III and Sandra Bland. Bullet points. I will not shoot myself in the head and I will not shoot myself in the back and I will not hang myself with a trash bag. And if I do, I promise you, I will not do it in a police car while handcuffed or in the jail cell of a town I only know the name of because I have to drive through it to get home. Yes, I may be at risk, but I promise you, I trust the maggots who live beneath the floorboards of my house to do what they must to any carcass, more than I trust an officer of the law of the land to shut my eyes like a man of God might, or to cover me with a sheet so clean my mother could have used it to tuck me in when I kill me. I will do it the same way most Americans do. I promise you, cigarette smoke, or a piece of meat on which I choke, or so broke I freeze in one of these winters we keep calling worst. I promise if you hear of me dead anywhere near a cop, then that cop killed me. He took me from us and left my body, which is, no matter what we've been taught, greater than the settlement a city can pay a mother to stop crying and more beautiful than the new bullet fished from the folds of my brain. Thank you. Wow, oh my God, that was so powerful. So powerful, so profound. Please give it up one more time for Jericho Brown. Atlanta's in the house. Uh, it, it's, again, it just shows how important our words are. This isn't just for, for entertainment. This is, this is for, for our healing. This is for our progress. So thank you, Jericho, for being here with us tonight. Thank you for your work. Uh, amazing and prolific as always. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jericho Brown, Jericho Brown. So coming up, we have another incredible, incredible poet. She is a musician. She's an educator. She represents Brooklyn. She's a two-time National Slam champion. Please give it up for my sister, Mahogany L. Brown. All right. Hey. Thank you, J. Ivy. And uh, shout out to Ursula Rucker. That is also, uh, she's a beacon for me. First poet I heard ever. Um, in, in contemporary times outside of high school was Ursula Rucker and she changed my life. Uh, so word, my name is Mahogany L. Brown. I am a black poet and I refuse to remain silent while this nation continues to murder black people. I have a right to be angry. They say you ain't supposed to be here, black girl. You ain't supposed to wear red lipstick. You ain't supposed to wear high heels. You ain't supposed to smile in public. You ain't supposed to smile nowhere, black girl. You ain't supposed to be no more than a girlfriend. You ain't supposed to get married. You ain't supposed to want no dream that big. You ain't supposed to dream at all. You ain't supposed to do nothing but carry babies and carry felons and carry weeds and carry silence and carry families and carry confusion and carry a nation, but never an opinion. Cause you ain't supposed to have nothing to say black girl, not unless it's a joke. Cause you ain't supposed to love yourself, black girl. 
You ain't supposed to find nothing worth saving in all that brown. You ain't supposed to know that Tina, Beyonce, Cecily, Shonda, rhymes, shine, 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 black girl. You ain't supposed to love your mind. You ain't supposed to love. You ain't supposed to be loved up on you, only supposed to pose voodoo child. Vixen inside you're supposed to pop out babies and hide the stretch marks. You're supposed to be still. So still they think you statue. So still they think you chalked outline. So still they keep thinking you stone. Until you look more Medusa. Then Viola Davis. Until you sign more Shanene than Kerry Washington. Until you're more side eyed than Michelle Obama on a Tuesday. But you tell them you are more than a hot comb in Washington set. You are Kunta Kente's kin. You are a black girl worth remembering. And you are a threat knowing yourself. You are a threat loving yourself. You are a threat loving your kin. You are a threat loving your children. You black girl magic. You black girl fly. You black girl brilliant. You black girl wonder. You black girl shine. You black girl bloom. You black girl, black girl. And you turning into a beautiful black woman, right? before our eyes. Thanks so much. Peace. Ooh, come on, Mahogany. Mahogany L. Brown in the building. Come on, Black girl. Wow, 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 wow. Brooklyn's in the house. Brooklyn's in the house. Mahogany, that was chilling, chilling. Thank you so much. Y'all, please give it up one more time, wherever you're at. I don't care if, if if, if you're, uh, you're at home or you're in your car, may pull over and just, man, just, just give, give a sister a round of applause. That was powerful. And again, speaking life to power. We have to continue to use the word to speak power. And, and that was a, a, an incredible example of that. Thank you, Miss Mahogany L. Brown. Much love, much love. So we gonna keep the show going. Um, this brother, he uh, he's based out in California, IA. He is a poet, spoken word artist, motivational speaker, actor. And as of earlier this year, he is a Grammy nominated spoken word artist. This brother, he's the first contemporary poet to be nominated and the Grammys, and, and we had a discussion some months back and just, just wanted to applaud the brother, congratulate him, and, and let him know how much that has pushed the culture forward. And that's what we're here doing tonight. We're pushing the culture forward. And, and I tell y'all, it, it's not about validation. We know our greatness. We, we, we're not to, we don't need validation. But when you have a, a, a stage, as great as the Grammys with a, with a light shining so bright. And you have these amazing, talented poets and artists, uh, spoken word artists with, with words that can shift people. It's important that we converge. It's important that we have the likes of Sekou Andrews and Ursula Rucker and Mahogany Brown. We have those names listed when we open up and see who's been nominated. So. Again, congratulations to our brother that's coming up. Y'all, please give a very, very warm welcome to our good brother, Mr. Seiku Andrews. My deaf poetry brother, let's go. What up, Jay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, first of all, um, you know, I'm, I'm very probably more careful than I even need to be in my credits and especially and I do so because I've told everybody along the way from managers to publicists and so forth look I don't I don't ever want to dishonor uh the accomplishments of uh the legacy of spoken word so let me make sure I just correct your statement that this Grammy nomination made me the first spoken word poet to receive a Grammy nomination for the best spoken word album category in 12 years, right? Some say 30 years because some, you know, the debate is was Maya Angelou and Nikki Giovanni considered more literary poets or spoken word poets. Uh, but I want to make sure I clear that up because I know, you know what I'm saying? Like you done got your own nominations, homie. <laughs> and I want to make sure I honor the fact that you got your nominations and you've been killing the scene for a long time. Uh, you know, I appreciate all the love you've given to all the, uh, the legends that I'm on the stage with today. And I just want to make sure that, you know, you get your props too because you've been killing the scene for, 
uh, for as long as I can remember. We both kind of came up in that same era of spoken word, and I got a chance to listen to you on tracks with Jay and and Ye and you know hearing about Rose Bowls and Super Bowls and you know all this stuff. And now for you to be a uh, a chapter uh, president of uh, of uh, you know Recording Academy, one of the chapters. I'm just I'm just honored to to know that spoken word is making those strides. So that's a big part of what um, what drives me. A big part of my mission and my purpose in life is to help create a more commercially viable industry for the art of spoken word. Um, and so I love the stuff that we're doing. I set my sights on the public speaking world with spoken word years ago. I set my sights on the Grammys last year. I'm continuing to try to set my sights on places where I feel like spoken word deserves to be heard. And I had a dream, a vision that I, I'd written a poem about the power of music. And I was like, I wanna perform this on the Grammy stage one day with like all these music artists behind me using spoken word to celebrate the power of music. And it, it didn't happen. I got a nomination instead, which I'm <laughs> thrilled about. Uh, but I figured this is a Grammy stage, right? So I'm gonna perform my poem about the power of music on a Grammy stage for the first time. Woo, mama made it. All right, here we go. <laughs> shout out to Mo B, shout out to Jessica Caremore. Uh, my, my homies, I ain't seen y'all in a while. It's good to be sharing the stage with y'all on Ursula Walker as well. Um, all right, here we go. <clears throat> The truth behind the science of music can be found in the laws of motion. Bodies at rest will remain at rest unless moved by an outside force. <laughs> and you know we all got one, right? That DJ who propels our physiology in ridiculous ways, that personal theme song that transports us to a better place, that workout playlist that moves our lazy ass bodies at rest through three more miles and two more sets And once. I even read of a surgeon who was struck by lightning and filled with an uncontrollable appetite to create music. <laughs> there is a spark in us that comes alive whenever music moves and it ain't no point in trying to fight it. Oh, you will lose. No, no, it is physiologically impossible for human hips to not gyrate when James Brown comes on. <laughs> Joints, muscles, bones undulate with a mind of their own. <laughs> and it don't stop there. Immune systems heighten when hormones hear high notes. Blood pressure lowers to the pendulum of baselines. Kicking fetuses wobble, baby, wobble, baby, wobble in the womb to Mozart as scientists study the Mozart effect on our smarts. Even the human voice itself has the power to drive out cancerous cells. So perhaps then it will be both a scientist in a lab and a songstress in a flat that will sing our cells a cure. It's more than just music to our ears. It's music to our bodies. It's music to our brains. It's increased math and literacy skills attained. It's millions more graduation caps that will be gained when the sweet sound of success is a high school band playing with music programs, raising test scores by 20%. Cutting music funding to save money for English and math is like removing the car's engine to save money on gas. We are literally removing the vehicle that is driving our collective success. Tell me, what other force has the power to affect mass congregation like music? Huh? No. Okay, may maybe sporting events, I'll give you that. Fine, and, and perhaps religious events too. But you know, I, I'll admit it. I'll admit it. Poetry ain't filling up stadiums yet. J. Ivy, Moby, yet. <laughs> Poetry ain't filling up stadiums yet, but we coming. And interpretive dance, it ain't. It ain't selling out the garden, you know. And when's the last time you enjoyed the halftime short film at the Super Bowl? No, right? Ain't nobody catching the Holy Ghost from the church art gallery. Shout, oh wow, look at the white space in that one. Praise God, hallelujah, the white space is amazing. No, quite the opposite. You walk into any get down, down home church before the sermon even starts and you will find a sweat lodge reverberating with drums, the slap of tambourines going strong, mouths wide, throats open, pulsating with songs that ready us to receive rapture. There are places where we find music as conduit to God. And it matters not the temple. You step outside that church and find cathedrals trembling beneath the might of organs, synagogues and mosques alike bellowing with hymns. Hell, even atheists are known to get down to a prince track 
when they want to get open. It was only when Albert Einstein, tortured by feudal calculations and feeling all was lost, took a moment to put down his chalk and bathe his violin in Bach, that his capacity for creativity revealed his theory of relativity. So whether or not through blood, we are all relatives, through music, we are all relative. My country, relative to your folk, my gospel relative to your soul, my pulse, here's your speaker, biofeedback. When I press my 808 to your chest and you sink to my breath, then our brainwaves dubstep to humanity's duet. See, Mozart might make us smarter, but when hip hop makes us connect beyond all reasonable doubt, we call that the Jay-Z effect. It is this power of music to move our individual units and re-release me, remixed by you, remastered, as us, and we will know that our symphony is hotter than my single when God hears us turn on and shouts, oh, that's my song. There we are each, we are each built to come alive when the beat starts. We're composed of electricity, waiting for the beat spark. And we may not all be struck by lightning and inspired to create music, but we can all be struck by music and inspired to create lightning. So let it move us to our apex, to our greatness, to our success, and connect us to our best through each other, like duets that perfect our highest octave, direct us to our quest, to the BPM of the drum set in our chest with the boom, boom, bap of a bass cleft that boom, boom, bap quickens our breath and boom, boom, bap, close the pace of death and erases stress and brings grace to the rest of this blessed life we have left with a force that gives motion to our bodies at rest because science is simply discovering what art already proved. Music is but a vehicle and through it, we are moved. Thank you. <laughs> we are moved, we are moved, say cool Andrews. Yo, that was amazing, lightning in a bottle, man. I love that poem, love that piece, love that performance. Incredible. Uh, Grammy nominated, Sekou Andrews. And, and for the record, me, I was on a Grammy winning album. Uh, the college dropout, you know, won a Grammy. And we want to see more brothers like Sekou. We want to see Sekou in there again and again. We want to see sisters in there in the spoken word category. So this, this is the perfect time to remind you you have until August 3rd, and I'm talking to all of our poets, to the poetry community. If you have a project that you put out between uh, uh, late August last year, I believe, September of last year until the end of August of this year, I may be a little off, but go to Grammy101.com. You can check the exact uh, window of that. Uh, but August 3rd is a deadline. If you have projects that you have submitted this year, please, by all means, submit. Man, say cool, Andrews. Thank you, my brother. Thank you for uh, kicking in that door again for, for the poets of this generation and those coming up. And again, August 3rd is the deadline, everybody. If, if you're not a poet and you know a poet who's submitted, who, who's released some work, make sure they submit. And if they didn't submit this year, please encourage them to submit next year. Whenever they put something out, make sure you you release it, you put it in the marketplace, it's available, the iTunes and Spotify's and all that good stuff. And, and when it comes time to submit, when them submissions open up, please, please submit and tell your friends to tell a friend to tell a friend to submit. And now we have one of my very, very special friends. She is a sister and, and I mean that, you know, I, I done been in her house, her house eating Salmon croquettes. I think we had salmon croquettes. It was something good. She she hooked up for us. And I've watched her son grow up. His name is King. He's grown into a king. She's an amazing, amazing mother, an amazing playwright, an amazing poet and spoken word artist. She's author books. She's published books. She has a, her own publishing company. So she has been one that has lifted other poets uh, into the publishing world. Uh, with her with her more back more black press publishing company she's a apollo legend 
you know, she was on Apollo. She just kept winning. They was like, yo, you can't come back no more. We're going to make you a legend. And, and and that's it. So because you just go keep winning and and we got to let somebody else win. OK, so we're going to make you an Apollo legend. She is an Apollo legend, author, playwright, author of the new book. We want our bodies, but we want our bodies back. Please make some noise for Detroit's own, my sister, Miss Jessica Care Moore. What up, though, Jay? Are you making me smile so hard? <laughs> like, I'm to read this serious poem. I'm like, oh, you're such a sweetheart. I love you, Jay Ivy. And I just want to say to all the poets that have already been on, Mahogany, um, Ursula, Nate. Um, I'm not going to shout out the one that's coming, but I love him so much as well. Uh, and uh, and say, cool, that was incredible. Like, my spirits are just lifted. And this is what the power of poetry is. I'm so honored to be a part of this. Um, Jay, love what you're doing. I love how I can help in any way um, to lift up this art form. Um, and so I'm reading something that I wrote when I was quite young, actually. I'm reading it from my sister, Ursula Rucker. Um, because of what's happened with George Floyd and what's happening with our sister, Breonna Taylor, and the things that have been continuously happening to our people, poets have always been at the front line of those movements and the voices for change in this country. And so thank you to the Recording Academy for recognizing that poets um, deserve more space. Um, but I'm reading this for my sister Ursula and for my, also for my sister Mahogany and Adia, because um, sometimes um, we are tired, um, but we still say yes. And Ursula, this is especially for you. I love you so much. And thank you for everything you've done for poets who record with music. This is called The Sweetest Revolutionary. My evening gown is gorilla green. I make offerings of myself before the first of every month because there are bills to be paid. Instead of getting laid, I prostitute verbs, manipulate whispers, define as words, saying shit we've already heard, but not quite like that. See, I know she poets who'll squeeze nipple hard-headed trees at their knees just so the men will name them honey. Haiku hips dripping 17 syllables of sweat, drying you off with sunset breath. Still, he ain't feeling you yet. Tongue tied, you travel on top of yellow bees, hiding your real sting because he likes the quiet type. Cool, yeah, right, whatever. You set your belly, adjust your scully, hoping to find some sexy sentence hiding between revolution and rhyme making. Damn, he's throwing my poem off. Got the nerve to sit in the front row on my front porch, on my living room, fake Asian throw rug, in my bathroom, on my mahogany, pays to go down on my bedroom, futon. I'm tripping, but he blends so well with the pillows. There are reasons I'm not supposed to look at brothers like you telling me I better write harder, talk louder, sing protest lyrics, keep my stomach flat, wear my hair in a politically correct style, smile the week between oppression that I'll do all the male poets and MCs was his confession. Like I'm wearing leftover pink Philly prime just laced under my brown koofy. Got a six pack of gunfire in my garter. I'm a bowl of mashed potatoes from scratch cooking martyr. Yeah, a war torn Detroit born bush baby when you bought my belly telescope tenderoni. A turkey baloney with two nice slits fighting butter bitch. One damn deep hose. Those ass trap for weather tricks you want to get with when the cafe rhetoric smoke clears. Got true fears that cling like lick clean culture kitty cats that you meow at when the jeans look right as we weigh on invisible scales on stage. How many pounds of black rage can your love handle? Still miracle our way wearing brown sandals, carrying seeds in our sultry saddles, flipping the pancake spattles, shaking the snake off baby rattles. Got to be head wrapped when we haiku. You know the way I seduce with my blues, even if I cry when I sing, cause baby, we can do anything. Excuse has abused us into believing we cannot find China break because we eat earthquakes during snap breaks. Double dust during dramas of who done it when I know the most wanted by first names. Meditation on solar plexus, he rests us into blue candlelight perfection. A high bath water affection, nourish a naked nature number, a natural nine to five that Need more than a cow god to make the ugly of the world wash away. Make our black butterfly spirits feel simply make it through the day, okay? Wings wobble and weaken as the star spangled banner swings billy club choruses and horses, the voices of our children's thoughts. Forces sing slay the great dreams that die when fireworks don't burn our names in branded flames. And you steady on me, what's up, baby? Game at my frame. Admit to trying to get my fur on while I find my nails down for the front lines or the free throw, whichever comes first. There's a thirst I want to let you drink my hot cocoa mango lips that I can't convince you. That workers never. Done. My work is never done. And my night oil rests the sun shown on my doorstep with long stem doubt for the sweetest revolutionary. When the vase lacks spiritual base, politically imprisoned passion petals can't grow broken hearted. It seems so romantic and cute to get started, but I need to finish my next book containing complete thoughts, not part time ones. Knowing Marvin Guy and Marvin, knowing Marvin Gaye died the night before his birth is why I hurry. And you worry that my life work may kill me before you ever get a chance to kiss my face when I really just need my voice hug, my spirit love, and a little time to work being a woman into my busy schedule. 
America offers Advil in place of menstrual husks. So we press our earlobes against our ovaries, listening for our children's footsteps, crapping our styles. We keel over on concrete tiles, painting on smiles so no one will know. We really want to fight south for the winter with the rest of the black eyed birds, leaving white stained relief on curious teeth, looking up our wing skirts. You blew your purple to breath of fresh air into my fertile sand colored belly, and now the dust got in your eyes. So you can no longer find the sexy in me between my knees. Tom, I'll get your poem on, baby. You will find revolutionary lady. Went away me in the water but not help raise our daughter in balance we dance with americanized feet that never remove shoes and don't know how to walk one block of laundry baskets on our heads and instead instead we wear dollar signs fornicate for dimes corporate climb trying to get to work on time blowing kisses that piles rhymes that can't get you a deal so it's hard for us to deal for real i'm the mc's wife in search of an angel to entangle vocal cords wrapped around my neck pleasant and massaging this microphones make me buy my membrane to my own gang bang you think i don't matter so my voice turns to matter squeeze so we squeeze so small and no longer I occupy space yet it's still here. How they send their black holes in my pantyhose so loud, clear nail polish can't cover it up. I'm pregnant with potential, but I burst silence. And just because you slap me on my ass doesn't mean I scream for you. My private is braided into pigtails, decorated past the and yellow rubber bands. The little girl in me is afraid, but the woman in me will kill you while cooking breakfast. That's that Scorpio shit. You get caught up in one of two menage a trois, my metaphor, five, six times a lady, third eye invade me. We drown in lyrical libations, never played on radio stations hands grow impatient and i want to be sweet for you baby and i want to be sweet for you baby but your spit no longer drips liquid sugar teeth are rotting and falling as i speak to my spirit alone with my things to do list standing on my spine before realizing your feet are too heavy for my back so i simply erase your name from the paper wet the dead tree of my tears i hope to grow it doesn't more you so afraid to let me show you how a real woman could bring out the man in you my wholeness will guide you the half of you you thought you didn't have so you only the offer the little that your body allowed and in the end that's never enough because i want to smell like it taste like it feel like it walk barefoot inside it wrap it around my waist wear it in the shower take it home me share it with my girls paint a wreath of cd to it eat it sweat it believe it african dance to it wash my face with a holy love grow it out my stomach rock my adidas put a letter run down my back lick it live it shake a tamarind and say amen because of it still it if i have to melt chocolate on top of it just want it to be sweet baby sweet like you like we can be like revolution <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Scorpio. There's a trail of fire. She left a trail of fire. Come on, man. You're trying to burn people's computers up. I, I need this. This was an investment. Don't come on now. Come on, Jessica Care More. Thank you so much. That was absolutely, absolutely amazing. The truth, you saw the truth. Detroit in the building. Thank you for that. Y'all make sure y'all support her. Get that book. Our, we want our bodies back. We want our bodies back. Incredible, incredible. So we gonna keep the show going. We we down to our to our last poet of the evening. Last but certainly not least, this brother is oh man, he's so profound. He he's an educator, a poet, uh, an author, and hailing from San Francisco, California, I A. And this brother, he gonna come and, and just bless us and close us out with some amazing energy. So please give it up for the one and only, the one and only, Mr. Tongo Ison Martin. Let's go. You can tell by my tires that not everybody who's driven with me is still alive. Also, that I like my drinks neat bottled and in a bus stop also, they were drowning in precinct paper, department store floor plans, and applications to the moon. You know, we could change the color of our snot from gifted to heart attack and, and tell you about ashes, but where are all these angels coming from smelling like the cigarette that fails? And why is the man on the safe side? His headlights freezing up. You got nothing to say at my funeral. I'll speak on your behalf. Heroin in my smile. Mountain made a flatland robbery among some things on my mind. The last store run in the name of shared afterlife Friday to the filter. I'm a tall tale on earth, but here's to that angel that never appeared to America in a night of dog paddling, a batch of hangovers looking for a home. You know, a liar wouldn't have lived this long. That's my human when fences speak. Hold a pair of rambling dice that got unique tempers and young souls to say, shut up about our city. I hear title months crash over a coast. Why lie? The street's teeth are in pieces. There's reservoir art on the faces of stragglers. The sad news from back home that mean we have to grow up on his behalf. Stumble back to a car full of glass stand. The truth is stale, but still liquor. Mission Street would be proud of me. I'm a mural man, almost organized. Remember when my lungs would wake up last walking all morning? If it was worth it, man, I'm three decades homeless. And reservoir art is all I ever see. And I'm 2,000 miles from my first fight. 
Maybe no one really survived. Maybe I wrote my first poem for no reason. Got it by teeth, goes this country. There's a cow's mouth on his flag. A peculiar notepad holds street life dear, but the writer's not here. He's somewhere talking to tombstones about the good old days or splashing reborn water on his latest face or wondering how his old gun is doing in the afterlife, wondering how much death trap is in those gas station now. It's got to be a million dollars a day on this concrete island. New engine in the moon, why it never goes down. I mean, 72 straight hours of night, at least according to everyone's posture around here. 8.30 in the morning is really 30 minutes of closing. The city shuts down for a sleepy rat race. Elevators shoot shuffle to the nearest heaven, laughing with rats the whole way up. There are scabs everywhere in puddles of city in concentrated schools, in TV lit warm rooms, you know, the light reveals military fatigue when it hits just right on the ties that are wrapped around the necks of lazy white guys. Empire is too easy, baby. Chant at the walls all summer if you feel like it. Let's wait for a target to move and shooting back. Running for a tree line made of freeways. Wisdom says against a war machine on Tuesday, you stand no chance, but may we be the last poor men to play it safe. Cow's mouth on the flag. A politician raises his hand and the crowd shows their teeth. An oligarch raises his hand, little girls are not safe outside. You all high depressed and comrades in function. 15 minutes of closing and the city has survived another black rebellion. We just paying dues by trash fires, not just anybody can set. Hey, don't you love how deadly things whisper in a moment? If people kill like feathers fall, with everybody screaming inside, the writer knows that, that death is not a matter of dignity, rather humor. In a house that smells like roach races, nuclear percentages on torn stalls, I mean here like never was. It's just lazy matches and manic inhumanity, hairs rushing away from life towards stalls. What are we doing here? Surviving. For no reason in particular, because nobody gone far today. Nobody go far tomorrow. Trust me, hell and heaven cannot count. Strange gardens where secondhand clothes play and concrete wishes to be human so that it could be accountable. Where they find you drenched and drains wish to be human so that they could be worthy arms for you to die in. They greet them all, grandson. Prepare for the day when every child is calm and don't say, don't say we ghosts didn't write you a poem. Don't say we didn't dig your life. Remember the shotgun by the coat rack that everybody in the house knows how to use. Remember the tightrope made of needles for walking in between driveways and man-made best friends? Go ahead, grandson, tune this street again. Never mind this country kills musicians first. Broken neck nights, scarred neck life. I mean, if these walls could write lyrics, they say, what's your angle, angel? I started 50 rounds passed by on the street with no daughters. The street has no sons. Just young prisoners of war in a racist city that means to make capital. And we know so much. We know it all. We were stood against walls. Who's on the third cross around here? Cow's mouth salivating over the street. And that is the story of why we aim at tea. <laughs> yeah, woo! Tango! My God, come on, man. Come on. Y'all yep. please give it up one more time for Mr. Tango, Ice and Martin. My God, my God. Come on, man. That was incredible. Chills, chills, my brother, chills. That was a, uh, man, incredible, incredible way to, to end this night. This is this is historic. This is historic. Again, this is uh, being brought to you by the Recording Academy's craft sessions. And this is the first ever spoken word event, the spoken word. And I just, I wanna thank every, every single one of you all for, for um, blessing us with your magic, with your power, with your, your, uh, your light and your love, with your gift. With your, with your God-given gift, with that electricity that flows through you, it was so evident that, um, that and, and it's so, so evident and so represented tonight. So thank you sincerely. And, and this, this, was, um, this was just a drop. This magic, this was just a drop of, in, in an endless ocean. There's so many incredible dynamic poets out here and it's important that we continue to lift them up and continue to support them. It's, it's so much power in here. So thank you again. I want to thank you, Ms. Adia Victoria, representing Nashville. Mr. Nate Marshall, representing Chicago. Ursula Rucker, Philly in the house. What up, Joan? What's Pastor Joan? How it go? Jericho Brown, Mahogany Brown, representing Brooklyn. Sekou Andrews. Jessica Caremore and Tongo Eason Martin. Again, thank you all. Um, it's, it's evident that, that our work is powerful. Uh, our work is, is out there, is daily, um, produced daily. And it's important, again, that you submit your work, that we all submit our work so we can bring these Grammys home. So for all the poets out there, if it's a live recording, or if it's a studio album, please make sure that you are putting your work into the marketplace and make sure that you are submitting 
your work to the Grammys. Go to Grammy101.com. If you need to hit me up, holler at me. You can catch me. Um, I'll answer any questions I know. If I don't know, I'll try and find, do my best to find out what it is. But please just make sure that, that we're submitting so we have a, le a legit chance at making change. We have too much power, too much talent, too many gifted folk for us not to be represented in that category. So please submit. Um, I, I strongly encourage you to do so. And again, this isn't about validation, but more so about taking advantage of a historic international platform that will shine light on what we do as artists and inspire the poetic generations that will follow our lead. This is our moment. Let's do it for those that came before us, for those that will come after us, and for the support of one another. Poets, let's make history. Let's make history. I'm gonna leave you with this. Our words lift us, break us, paint us, stain us. Intention is written, spoken, our hearts are either healed or broken. Tonight, a lot of hearts were healed. I thank you for being here with us. This has been the spoken word. I'm your man, Jay Ivey. Thank you, be safe, stay healthy, and always lead with love. Peace, and we out. Much love, poets.